small Well, we took all the chances and danced all the dances And girl, did it feel fine We were writing songs all summer long There was nothing that we couldn't do The sky had no limit and we flew in it Hand in hand into the blue Girl, I lost myself in that sweet time But I found myself in you One ready rolled and a heart of gold Was playing on the stereo Girl, I never saw it coming That summer full of loving Paradise embraced our souls We bathed in the light and we danced all night Singing to that heart of gold Girl, I lost myself in that sweet time But I found myself in So, welcome to our latest lockdown pass. This is going to be a little workshop. I had a request, so what this one's going to be about is arm balances. So, as you've seen at the beginning of the video there, there's, we're going to have a go at three arm balances, or what we're going to do is start with, how do I even do them? How do I start to get to the place where I can at least feel what's happening, regardless of, you know, straightening legs out or whatever or other things that come after how do i do crow how do i get to just be able to sort of hold uh, the car sniff or maybe just a, a few seconds even so what i'm going to do is give you like little beginners tips maybe different ways of trying to do it in order to so you can start to have a practice at home okay so we'll start with crow and crow for me is like it's generally the, the very first arm balance that you're actually gonna get. It's like it. Somebody described it to me one time. It's the gateway drug to all of the other arm balances that you're gonna do. So what it means is is that you can get this one pretty quick, you know. So <clears throat> the secret in uh, about any arm balance is in the name itself, and the name is arm balance. So if it was all about strength, then it would be called an arm strong or, or something like that. It's not. It's about once you get to that little balance point, everything becomes light, it becomes much easier to do. It's almost like someone's picked you up by the seat of the pants and you're just there. So what it means is what you're looking to do is your, your arms are a centre point and you're trying to you're trying to move so you get this seesaw pivot point in the middle so you become balanced so what it means is your head has to go far enough forward in order to counterbalance your your pelvis so it's this moving forward as you do it okay so i'm going to start with just let's see if we can get up there in the first place so if we're going to start with crow so if um if you come to sort of this position and then you want to bring your hands down between your legs like that and then you see this little sort of divot here between the, the calf muscle and the knee that's the only reason God gave you that is so you can learn how to crow <laughs> so you want to get this wants to be if I bend my elbow it wants to be on this side of my elbow if it's down this side my legs are just going to slide off all the time like this and it's it become it's really really difficult because you're trying to hold on with your legs but what you want to do is give yourself like at first a good wide strong base so if you lift your knees up a little bit and then lean forward and tuck your elbows into your knees and at first bring your hands out really wide like this you know and this eventually you'll come in and your hands will be really close but if you've never done crow and you're wanting to do it think hands are wide knees are clamped onto the back of my elbows and you see how my elbows are bent like this that means I've got something to push on if that arm is straight that leg falls down to the floor like that you see that so if I have a little shelf 
to put my knee on, it means I can lean on it rather than have to try and squeeze my legs together. So I'll think wide like this and then hands are down and as we always say, shoulders are back and push into the hands like this. Okay, so the next thing, I'll, I'll turn to the side for this, is when you start to move forward, you want to let your sit bones come up into the air and then move through the through the through that single plane of motion that way forward. You don't want the head to go down. It'll tip down a little bit, but not too much because if the head's going down, it'll make you tip forward. So what I mean by that is, you know, your knees are high, your elbows are tucked in, hands are quite wide. So if you're facing the length of your mat, hands are at least the width of your mat apart. And then draw them in as much as you can until it lifts your knees. And then as you lift your bum, start to move forward like this. And then you'll be able to lift one foot up and then the other foot up like this. So don't worry if your feet are like this, that's okay. Just try and get that place where you're balanced. But if you put your head down like this, it's going to make you tip forward onto your head like that. So think, you're not looking down, you want to be looking ahead of your hands like that. Elbows are tucked in, hands are down, shoulders are back, pushing into my hands. And I'm looking forward, you see where I'm looking? My drishti is up here, not down here. So as I move forward, like this, I'll feel the weight go into my knees, into, up from my knees into my elbows and then I can lift one foot, open the other, and then you can try and bring your toes together, and maybe try and straighten the arms. But well, once you get that initial sort of balance and you hold it for a few seconds, that's it then. You're in the game, you know. Once you've held it for one or two, the brain starts to believe it can do it. And then it just gets better and better and better. And then you can start to sort of tighten that whole thing up I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I mean so eventually the end pose sort of like what you're looking for is the whole of the back of your sort of tricep here to be going down your shin bone like this so your knees are really high up into uh, your armpits and then tuck the elbows in, hands are flat, and again lift the head and as I move forward I'm trying to keep the arms as straight as I can, shoulders are back, and I want to move forward, keep the head lifted and draw the feet up. And there you go, there's your crow. So, the next one that I've been, I, what I'm doing, I'm trying to do poses that you see all the time, basically. Ones that appear on Instagram and, and these sort of poses. And you see, like, other yogis doing them and you just think, it just seems so inaccessible at times. But really all it is, 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 is a bit of practice. And, and when you're doing these, I mean, don't forget, I'm teaching you like you're doing this practice at home, in your garden or, or you know, in a, in a living room. So you can get the cushions around you. Load the pillows up, cushions off the couch, get them around, because you are going to tip over. It's just sort of avoidable, it's just part of the learning process. And I work with uh, a lot of top motorcyclists in the world, and like, one of the main sayings is, is that it's never about how you fall off, it's about how you get back on. And that makes all the difference, you can fall over a hundred times but if you get frightened then you're never going to break through that and get that pose but all these poses are available to to anybody you know you don't have to have big muscles you just have to get to that point where you're tipping forward so if you've got to sort of here and you're thinking my feet won't come up off the floor they just won't come up all you have to do is move your head a couple of inches forward and then they just lift up on their own, you see, it just, they just come up on their own. And what's happened is, is that my head has got enough weight forward to counterbalance my hips. And at that point, you can see it looks light and easy to do. So, you know, trust yourself, have a go, 
And don't forget, you know, get them cushions up if you if you're worried about tipping forward. There's nothing like a big comfy cushion to fall into. You'll be absolutely fine. All of these are kind of on the wrists, you know. So this can take a little bit of, you know, the hands are, are well pushed back. So it, it, you can really feel it in the wrist. So as well, be aware of that. So if you're trying and trying and your wrists are weak, that's going to affect, you know, the whole rest of the pose because this is your foundation into the floor. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is is what we call like a side crow. So you see it with the with the two legs out to the side. So the, the first thing that you're always looking for is the balance. Once you get to the balance, sort of the legs straightening and things like that, just sort of like becomes natural because you're in the plate, you're in a state of balance. So if that is firm and you're in balance there, then you can start to let other things happen off the pose like the legs straightening or, or maybe opening the leg out to the back but the first thing you have to get is that real strong foundation and that place of balance and balance is is when the body's body body is balanced then the mind is balanced with it and confidence grows from that point and then you can say right I'm good here and I can start to maybe try the other things so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of uh, getting into this this first one is just how I do it you know it's just how I sort of unless I'm in a flow and I'm, I'm kind of I, you know it's part of your flow but if I'm just trying to practice and get me balanced this is how I would do it so I want to come up to on my uh, toes like this knees together and then um, so I'm spitting on my knee that's a cheat that I'm letting you in on a cheat now so don't say I don't do anything for you this here a little bit of spit on my leg helps the back of my arm stick to that leg sometimes it can be a bit slippy and also if you've got like a, a loose shirt it, it, your legs can move on that so you know sometimes a little cheat here and there doesn't do any harm so I want to have my knees together and facing forward and then my torso I'm going to turn all the way around and bring down to the floor like this and then bending this elbow, I want to tuck this elbow into that knee and then plant that hand into the floor and then the left hand is going to come across and forward and my movement is across that way so we'll see, as I move across, I plant the weight into that elbow I let the head come forward, it counterbalances my hips and then see if you can get to that balance there and then see if you can straighten the legs okay that's one way of getting into it so I'm going to show you um, another way of getting into this pose that uh, a friend of mine uh, showed me uh, Dave Sykes who himself is a great yoga teacher I think he teaches in Careford gym so if you're about there check him out goes classes Great guy, great energy. He's also like a really top martial artist, so he's got a lot to share. And like, this is one of the things he shared with me about uh, ten years ago. And I teach it still. I still share his uh, this way of getting into it because you can do it from um, when you're in your practice. It's uh, so he'll start, you know, from this twist here. So you'll be doing this twist, or it sometimes looks like this, okay, and then he'll bend that leg and then tuck this elbow into the knee, bring the hand over and then lift up and into it from there. So sometimes, I love that, I mean I really love it because once you're there you can open the legs and, and you just come back to seated and you're into the twist on the other side so it really fits in to to it to your own flow if you like into your own asana practice if you find yourself sat on the floor and you're doing that twist you think this is an ideal opportunity for me to lift into that balance and just come nicely back down to a seated position do the twist on the other side and then you've got the option of that arm balance on the other side so you know I'm Thank you, David. If you uh, if you happen to be watching, I uh, that was uh, I remember at the time. I was kind of like at the very very beginning 
of my yoga journey and like so all of these little tips that I picked up from all of these teachers that I met I mean Dave's a friend of mine from school we've known each other since I think Murray's Road School which God, I think we're about eight or nine years old there so we've, it's a long uh, friendship that we've had and funny how we've both ended up teaching yoga and doing things like this but like yeah check him out and uh, you'll love his classes he, he has like a really good flow to his classes so yeah check him out so the next class that we're, uh, pose we're going to do is a pose called Titi Barsana or Firefly so this is another one that you, you see a lot you know and it, it really does look really nice you know when, when it's an aesthetically nice pose to look at you know that's what I can say about it and when you actually get it, it the sense of achievement is there as well but it's not an easy one at all because it takes a lot of this drawing down through the shoulders to create sort of space for yourself okay so we're going to start with if you start with your feet sort of hip distance apart and then bend down and see if you can bring your hands between your legs kind of like this and then you want to tuck your elbows underneath your knees like this okay so you can see I'm trying to sort of tuck that elbow underneath the knee and then as you do that see if you can bring your hands out really really wide yeah and then you want to let your sit bones come down towards the floor and as you do that you'll feel how the leg clamps onto the back of the arm there. so then as you let the your sit bones come down to the floor and you lift your head one foot will come off the floor at a time and then you can try and bring your toes together and then you can try and oh, oh, straighten the legs out to the side and come down. Do you see how that works? Wide arms, elbows tucked in. And then the more you sort of get the balance point, you can start to bring the hands a little bit closer together, a little bit closer together, until eventually you're really pushing down through the hands. But the initial thing to get is the balance because if you can get the balance you realize that yes there's a little bit of strength involved I'm not going to tell fibs but at the same time you don't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger to do these things <laughs> when I started I remember doing uh, my first teacher training and we were all going away and there was a girl next to me Kathy who was heavily pregnant and she's a slight, I mean, she's a beautiful girl, slight, but pregnant. She had this big tummy on her. And she was doing these arm balances, and I couldn't get near them. And, you know, I, my arms are probably twice the thickness of hers. So it's not really about strength. It's about balance. Everything's about balance. Life is about balance. Emotions are about balance. So if you think, if I can get to a point of balance, I can, I, you grow confidence in yourself. You go, oh my God, I did that. And that goes to, I'm going to nail it. I'm going to smash this this time. And before you know it, it's just something that you do and it's in your practice because practice, 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 practice makes perfect or as close to perfect as any of us can be. So believe in yourself, give them a go. Don't forget, go back in the video to the, to the instructions, see how it works. Think, you know and just go through it nice and slowly give yourself a chance don't judge yourself at all because I can tell you I went face first in Karma Studio at the beginning of TT week and got a big carpet burn right down my face and on the end of my nose and had to walk around for two weeks telling everybody that I fell off a yoga mat which you know is okay but not when you're supposed to be a rough tough biker you know what I mean so don't be embarrassed about anything just give it a go believe in yourself have faith you can do this and then maybe we'll do a video further down the line where we start to show it a little bit more discipline and we start to tighten the pose up for everybody so 
I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's short and it's just quick into them things, but they're just the little fundamentals that'll get you started and get you feeling that balance. Once you understand there's a way to get into them and what you're looking for, then you can start to understand and start putting that into some sort of uh, system for yourself. But they're great form, they're really good for you. They really strengthen all this top half of the body and up and around the chest, the back. You know, it really, it does take away fear out of your system because you have to confront fear. In order to do them, it's go back to that. It puts you in that little fight or flight mode. But have faith in yourself. You can do it. There will be another video coming along soon. Thank you very much again for all of your subscriptions, all of your likes, all of your uh, amazing comments and class requests. Uh, keep them coming. If you want notifications of any videos, hit the bell in the corner. And uh, thank you so much for all your love and support. I'll see you soon. Namaste.